I think we should also not cancel Holly Brown. It was an honest mistake, except it was completely dishonest, but it doesn't negate all of the good that Holly has actually done on her channel and all of the good videos that she's made. I've made mistakes, you've made mistakes, it could be argued that YouTube itself is a mistake, and we can criticize those mistakes and laugh at them. But we can also do that without trying to end somebody else's career, you know what I mean? But I do think that to an extent it's like, at what point do you say like, maybe you shouldn't, like, shouldn't shove in, like, references to the USS Liberty incident when it's not- <laughs> Maybe, maybe he shouldn't, like, say Shalom. My tweets were very mean, but you would think that a crowd who so valiantly champions their right to use edgy humor would be able to take a couple of mean tweets from some dude on Twitter without having a complete meltdown. Hey, Nicholas DiOrio, we in this shit, son? Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to embark on a journey together because this situation has quickly become one of the most hilarious and pathetic YouTube dramas I've ever been involved in. D'Angelo Wallace is a drama YouTuber who spends most of his time in the beauty slash art community. He's been spending his time cropping, compiling, and creating narratives about another YouTuber named Turkey Tom for the better part of a week now. Not to mention the apparent good friends of Tom have been aiding and supporting the increasingly apparent slander. Well get your affairs in order detective, cause we're about to jump feet first into hell. On November 26, D'Angelo sparked the conflict through a tweet calling out Turkey Tom for anti-semantic imagery in his recent video about YouTube sponsors. It reads as follows. So, uh, the YouTuber Turkey Tom threw a bunch of anti-Semitic imagery in his latest video and it resulted in a comment section full of anti-Semitism. Wow. And the content he was referring to can be heard here. Hello and shalom, my brothers, and welcome to a very special episode of the Tigger Tom Show. Today, I have a very special presentation for all of you. A story, really. One of gaming, shaving, dangerous people pushing dangerous narratives, and my personal favorite pastime being a merchant, an accumulator of wealth to hide away from my fellow man and look down upon the writhing masses in shame, shame and pity. Okay, yeah, drop him, he's a racist and an anti semite Oh, look, it's my favorite developer, Plarium. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Just to be clear, this was, and still is, a completely valid criticism. D'Angelo raises a content versus content issue, and while I don't agree with D'Angelo at all, I have got no problem with him raising a content criticism against another YouTuber who covers drama. For that reason, I didn't put too much thought into it, and I basically left the situation alone, thinking that it would just end in a agree to disagree type of situation. If you have to rely on racism for YouTube engagement, A, accept that your content is trash, and B, Yourself. Truth be told, I wrote off D'Angelo's argument entirely because he bases it upon a misleading pretense. It's basically just crop screenshots of Tom's YouTube comments. The argument itself seems to be that these cherry-picked comments prove that Tom panders to anti-Semites. If you make a joke, they will come. And he claims the comment section is filled with them, when in reality, that's just not the case. What we're actually looking at is a minority of comments from Tom's video. From what I'm able to tell through this Augie RFC stream, there were about 750 comments on Tom's video the night that D'Angelo made his accusation. And for transparency reasons, let's just use 600 as our ballpark estimate since his tweet went up in the afternoon. He was able to locate six comments that were very spread out, which he then stitched together. Let's not ignore the fact that this could come off a bit misleading if your everyday Twitter intellectual misinterpreted it and assumed these came in rapid succession. Especially since his claim was, and still is, mind you, that Tom's comment section was full of it. Six comments out of 600 would be 1%. Definitely not the majority. And Tom's video is definitely not something that I would consider to be full of anti-Semitism. On top of that, D'Angelo has also publicly gone on record stating that he isn't responsible for anything as a content creator, which basically speaks for itself. Responsibility. My platform gets larger and larger every day. And because of this, I've really been thinking a lot about my responsibility as a content creator and i have come to the conclusion that 
I literally don't have any. I'm a YouTuber. There are never going to be any repercussions for any of my actions. Why Tom should be treated any differently has yet to be seen. And also, let's not forget the fucking YouTube comment section, really? You know, the degenerate cesspool that's the closest thing we have left to what was 2007 Xbox Live. How anyone thinks they can prove anything with the YouTube comments still baffles me. Especially when H3H3 is in the thumbnail, who's a very controversial creator by himself that just so happens to be Jewish. Should I not make videos on H3H3 because him just being Jewish could lead to anti-Semitism in my YouTube comments, which apparently I'm supposed to be responsible for? Am I fostering Nick Fuentes' audience by the second? So I just classified it as a shitty criticism, one that's not based on fact, and one that's certainly not worth responding to in video form. Shockingly, D'Angelo was apparently getting quite a bit of backlash by the supporters of Turkey Tom, who would have guessed? To anyone with brain cells, this really wouldn't come as a surprise because his claim was a checkable lie that could easily be debunked by anybody who took a stroll through Tom's comment section. Nevertheless, the most important conclusion to come to is that D'Angelo's accusations didn't come off as hateful or race baiting at the time. He didn't outright call Tom an anti-Semite, and I just figured a shit criticism was, well, a shit criticism. No reason to call anybody here truly malicious at this point. And that is, of course, until a day passes and he released his second tweet that reads as follows. Happy Thanksgiving. We're eating Turkey Tom. <laughs> he thought we wouldn't be able to see his racism through the thin veil of comedy. Meanwhile, he's doing this in everyday conversation. So allow me to repeat from yesterday when you tried to gaslight me. Go F yourself. Which in my opinion is exponentially worse, and it leaves the realm of petty YouTube drama. It also is funny how he himself describes the situation in the video, because it's a complete tonal shift from the accusations he made on Twitter. I get what he's trying to imply, but I'm Alex falsely accused somebody of assault, so that's like comparing apples to oranges. Another thing that came up a lot was that I'm in SJW, which is ultimately not true, but even more ultimately ironic because the people calling me that were the ones absolutely losing it on Twitter, acting like I was calling Tom a Nazi and a white nationalist. I called him racist for saying I hate niggers. It's not that serious. The overreaction is what gets me the most. Was I overreacting? Obviously. My tweets were very mean. But you would think that a crowd who so valiantly champions their right to use edgy humor would be able to take a couple of mean tweets from some dude on Twitter without having a complete meltdown. I see. You're choosing to play stupid or you're just dumb here because you're claiming it's not that deep and you're just sharing an opinion on Twitter. That's especially funny to me because you cross-posted this tweet declaring Tom was a racist to your YouTube community tab where it was clear that you were trying to drum up some support and hype for an eventual video. Video. There is no passive way to call a man a racist. I'm not gonna beat around the bush with you. To say a person hates an entire group of people carries a lot of weight, and while you're showing his supposed racism through a thin veil of comedy on Twitter, you are blatantly calling him a racist on YouTube. For people who think it isn't as important as allegations made by I'm Alex, I guess you just don't use Twitter because this shit happens all the time. For example, in 2018, a Georgia State athlete posted on a private Instagram saying, I passed, and then the N word in all caps. This was on a Finsta, which is basically the Instagram equivalent of a YouTuber's private Twitter account. The story starts off kind of the same as Tom's. A snake screenshotted and shared the post, but in her case, it went viral, causing the school to have to respond, the girl to be suspended from college athletics, a petition created for her to be expelled, and bullying her to the point where the girl had to withdraw from college. This was clearly not used in any hateful context. I mean, you're looking at it on the screen, and now a girl who went through 12 years of schooling lost her chance at college that she chose over a stupid comment and grifters on Twitter. College students get expelled, tossed out of fraternities and sororities, and publicly shamed all the time for situations like this, and sometimes it is deserved. But not something like this. Not when you say someone's a racist and there's no hate there, because if you take the hate out of the racism, it's really not the same word. I wonder how the job hunt will go for someone who posted an edgy comment when she passed a college exam. Spoiler alert, probably not very well. And that's not even mentioning her age, which at the time was 18 years old, which makes her an adult. It's worth noting that Tom isn't, and while most grandstanders on Twitter would argue that normal high school age people don't make edgy jokes in private, and I heavily disagree, that's not why this comparison is relevant. 
While I personally have the belief that people below the age of 18 making edgy jokes is completely normal and they shouldn't have their lives and careers ruined over the precious Twitter accountability that everyone's trying to enforce, it's really relevant here because of D'Angelo, someone who you'd think based on this situation would have had a firm stance on accountability based on his statements. But he has a very particular way of phrasing his stance. It's almost interesting how he chooses to word it. I am 21. I am an adult. Young though I may be, I'm the only one responsible for my actions. And I understand that. But to expect that same mindset from somebody who is 15 years old is so backwards to me. Because you can't expect something from someone who is incapable of doing that. If Haley Morales was 21 years old like me, I wouldn't be making this video. If she was 18 years old, I might feel bad for her, but I wouldn't make this video because ultimately it's up to her to defend herself. But she's six years younger than me. And if you are my age or older, you know what I mean when I say a lot of things change between you being 15 and you being older than that. You might understand right from wrong when you're 15, but you don't understand implications. And being held accountable in the same way that you should be when you're an adult, when you're 15 years old, is not beneficial and it's not going to help you because you're still not going to understand what's going on. Oh, and what was the evidence, by the way? What's the bulletproof evidence you collected on this degenerate turkey? Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be conclusive. Well, to start off, our buddy D'Angelo admitted that he wasn't even sure these messages were real when he posted them, which means he basically just took a shot in the dark and risked branding Turkey Tom as a racist without even knowing if the evidence he had was valid. By the way, when I brought out that second round of screenshots, Tom should have just said they were fake because I would have had like no way of proving otherwise. He also mentions he couldn't at any point reach out to Tom because that's not how YouTube in 2019 works, which is really ironic as that's one of the most criticizable points of every single one of the biggest dramas all year. I just called him out from one creator to creator. Publicly, of course, because that's how 2019 works. And see, if Tom and I had had this conversation in a vacuum or you know, in private, but we don't do that because we're influencers. Which is especially funny to me because that's exactly what I did here. While I don't think you're necessarily required to speak to someone before you make a video on them, I'm at least a firm believer that you should have some sort of confidence in your own evidence when you're accusing someone of being a racist. Maybe in this case you should have reached out to him, maybe it would have contributed to your argument. Instead, you're just closing your eyes and creating the allegations that were clearly designed to go viral. Once you put all that behind you and analyze what we have here, you'll notice they're just cropped out of context discord messages. One specifically where Tom is clearly joking and it's visible even in the little context that D'Angelo decided we get to have. I don't see Tom showcasing the beliefs that the white race is superior in any of these messages. Pardon me if I missed it. So just to reiterate, D'Angelo's argument is based on cropped jokes that he himself couldn't verify the validity of and they were used to declare Turkey Tom, who was 16 at the time, to be a full-blown racist. D'Angelo has also publicly gone on record stating that people below the age of 18 aren't responsible for their actions. Well, that's flawed right out the gate, don't you think, D'Angelo? And if you look at the evidence, you'll see some example of Tom's edgy gamer word, which is important to note that none of these examples were meant to be public, and they weren't. These jokes were all written in private conversations and never meant to leave those group chats around people that he trusted. Sitting with Tom for over a day and a half while he was searching, Tom was unable to locate these messages or even who they were with. Full transparency for me, I'm someone who talks to Tom occasionally, there is no usage of the n-word in my DMs to be seen. Surely I could have deleted the messages, but you'll have to take my word for it because apparently I'm not trusted enough to get these coveted jokes. Now let me be clear, Tom should not be making these jokes. There's no reason that Tom should be risking his career and future by making niggas don't talk, they just say chicken jokes. I personally think any YouTuber who has 100,000 subscribers should probably know better than this at this point, and I told Tom to stop doing it while I was chatting with him even before D'Angelo made his video, and I genuinely do think he will stop doing this. However, the reason I think this, and the reason he has to do this, isn't because I'm against edgy jokes, or I think that Tom's a racist, it's because of the snaky fucking YouTubers who will leak anything for clout, and the disingenuous Twitter keyboard activists who race bait harder than D'Angelo Wallace. Listen, that may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm so sick of dudes acting like Al Sharpton grifting on Twitter, and then sitting us down for a nice chat about 
about Tom's future on his YouTube channel, like fucking Dr. Phil. And while we're here, let's consult the additional evidence that was presented to us from D'Angelo's video, since apparently Tom's racism knows no bounds. It's been revealed that Tom also has said the gamer word publicly. And pointed out videos in which Tom had been documented saying stuff like burn the niggers publicly on Twitter. He's apparently apologized for this stuff in the past, or so I've heard, <laughs> but these messages came after. So what's the point of apologizing if you're just gonna do it again? Speaking of that, in the video in which he apologizes, it ends with him doing it again. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. Admittedly, I had absolutely no idea that he had said this stuff publicly until I heard it from D'Angelo's mouth. However, it really hasn't changed my opinion. First of all, D'Angelo has complete control of context in this scenario of his video, and he doesn't choose to allow his viewers to have it. D'Angelo says, He's apparently apologized for this stuff in the past, or so I've heard. Besides the fact that Tom was actually 14 years old in this screenshot, and this this is far from proof that Tom is openly racist publicly. The or so I've heard part is especially confusing since the apology is found in the video he's showing on screen by Crimson Studios here. I shouldn't have even made those jokes, even if I had made a better attempt to show that they were comedic in nature. As for the edgy stuff, it's just my sense of humor really, which has slowly faded over time as when I was 14 years old I thought that just saying a racial slur in any context was hilarious, but nowadays I think I've refined my epic and edgy sense of humor a bit more. So let's cut the bullshit. He's absolutely heard Tom apologize, which is a bit disingenuous. Then D'Angelo makes two points, one of which being that Tom apologized and then did the same thing at the end of the video, which really isn't true because he doesn't seem to realize that Tom was also apologizing for this second instance in the same video. This inconsistency would have been more apparent if D'Angelo were to put Tom's apology in the video in the first place. The other is that the screenshot took place after, so Tom's apology for the public stuff really doesn't matter, and this doesn't make any sense here because in the two instances where Tom said the n-word publicly, he had rightfully apologized for them simultaneously. The second of which, by the way, was accidentally tweeted onto his main account instead of being for his private account. The common denominator here is that when Tom says some stupid shit publicly, he has manned up and apologized for it. Why Tom should be required to apologize for being an edgelord in private DMs is beyond me. If Tom screams the n-word in the forest and no one's around to hear it, apparently D'Angelo thinks that means Tom Tom hates black people. What D'Angelo seems to see is a rich history of Tom leaving hints that he's a racist just looks to me like Tom's always had this stupid edgy sense of humor behind the scenes and now it's beginning to catch up with him and bite him in the ass. I guess where we disagree is where I think Tom's just an idiot and he thinks Tom has a hatred for minorities. I know the age thing keeps coming back up, but when it's considered that this dude is in high school, I just think mine's a more logical conclusion to land on. Shalom, I'm a Jew, I like money, I collect wealth, Ben Shapiro, money. And the thing is, Tom is completely aware of how he came across because he even included this clip. Okay, yeah, drop him, he's a racist and an anti -sub. Once you see how he uses the mental gymnastics there, his motivation for his original tweet really starts to get called into question. And this leads me to one of two conclusions. The first of which, and the one that I believe right out of the gate, was that this entire situation was a politically charged case of race baiting on Twitter. After blatantly calling Tom a racist based on leaked private Discord messages, it's not a far cry to make an educated guess that the first tweet was an attempt to make Tom out to be an anti-Semite. While never explicitly stating it, maybe that's because he didn't think his argument was bulletproof, so he walked that thin line right up to the door. This way, in case it backfired, he could have just responded with, well, I never explicitly called him an anti-Semite. He looks all calm, cool, and collected in his video saying that we're the real SJWs and that we gaslit him for his virtuous criticism, but in all honesty, we were just doing the same thing that he was doing to Tom. We were poking holes in his argument, exposing contradictions, and laughing at him, but that makes us snowflakes, D'Angelo? It sounds like when you make a shitty criticism and get dogpiled for it, you claim it's criticism that Tom couldn't handle, and when we respond to you, it's only because we're a bunch of snowflakes. You claim that we're the ones breaking down on Twitter. I called him racist for saying I hate niggers. It's not that serious. The overreaction is what gets me the most. Was I overreacting? Obviously. My tweets 
were very mean. But you would think that a crowd who so valiantly champions their right to use edgy humor would be able to take a couple of mean tweets from some dude on Twitter without having a complete meltdown. But alas. However, you're the dude who started making the community post to drive traffic to your Twitter. Not only that, you're the guy who was talking about how you were ignoring the debate in the video. But at that point, both of our Twitter followings got into a debate about whether or not it's racist to say I hate niggers, which is fun. But I didn't get into it because at that point, you're going to believe whatever you want to believe. I don't have time to go through the, but the word has a racist history, but Idub said it's just a word. And then once you look into those community posts, you are making research paper sized comments, debating with fans and trying to collect information from anyone and everyone. I don't think someone who is so sure of their argument would be accepting any and all submissions of evidence through comments made in a community tab. I mean, how disingenuous can this get? And while I still do stand by a majority of that, I'd say my mistake was thinking that it was politically motivated. While it certainly appeared that way from the naked eye, anyone who spends more than five minutes going through your content would notice that the vast majority of your videos are within five seconds of the 10 minute mark, and you've almost made milking drama into a meme on your channel with all the times you've mentioned it. Really pretty, and honestly, of course it was for Twitter likes, but that doesn't change my criticism or invalidate my opinion. We don't post things on Twitter for nobody to see them. Anyway, it looks like I've gotten 10 minutes of content out of this, so. Leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, a big thank you to my 42,000 subscribers. And looks like I've gotten 10 minutes of content out of this, so leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my 103,000 subscribers. Okay, bye. As for Tom's assertion that I don't really care about the issue, and I was just using it for Twitter likes, that's the only part of this entire situation that actually hurt me, because... If you knew what kind of person I was, then you would know that I'm also using this situation for YouTube likes. Anyway, it looks like I've gotten way more than 10 minutes of content out of this, so leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my 234,000 subscribers. But he also bragged about how many Twitter followers he gained in Bobox's comment section, and then he bragged about putting ads in a fake apology video in his community tab, and then he bragged about how much money he was gonna make in my DMs, which he didn't even have to do that in. This dude is a grifter. He saw that Tom made an edgy joke about something in a video and realized he could profit off of it. When the first criticism failed, he attempted a more direct SJW approach, and when the SJW play didn't get its intended response, D'Angelo turned around and acted like fucking Dr. Phil, playing the cool, calm, collected YouTuber who was very careful which arguments that he addressed and which arguments he didn't. See, Tom is the perfect candidate, because at 100,000 subscribers, everyone is fully aware who he is, and an exposed video will drive views. However, he's still in that sweet spot of being significantly smaller than D'Angelo, and for that reason, he could be sure that Tom's fans won't come in and ratio him. But if you need some proof, look at this community tab response where he clearly wasn't panicking at all in a response to a fan named Big E. Apparently, the correct usage of the N-word has a direct relationship tied to the quality of one's content. What do you mean ineligible? I have over a million subs, what the f- Shalom, my brothers. <laughs> Because iDubs makes those high quality videos, then calling him a racist would be disingenuous. Yeah, D'Angelo, I'm sure iDubs running around saying the N-word is A-OK -okay in your book if you're willing to brand a high schooler as a racist for saying it in private. I'm sure that's got nothing to do with the fact that iDubs towers over you in subscribers and you'd be ratioed if you even tried to make the same argument targeting him or, I don't know, PewDiePie, who's made more anti-Semitic imagery that was much more egregious and direct than anything Tom has ever released. I ran out of ideas. Salome, my brothers. Listen, I've never been one for the he's just doing it for views and clicks argument. I think 99% of the time, it's just used to silence creators' criticism, but honestly, here? Well, we've easily debunked most of his criticisms, and the fact that he's so open about only doing this for clicks and money makes me genuinely believe he accused Tom of being a racist to capitalize off the cancel culture craze, thinking that nobody in their right mind would defend a teenager who used the N-word. To summarize, D'Angelo came in really hard on Twitter, bashing the shit out of 
Tom guns blazing. Twitter fingers had appeared to have transitioned fully into trigger fingers, but then he got blown out and laughed at, so he posted a video saying, we'll agree to disagree, a full tonal shift. On top of that, the man simply isn't very bright. He was called out for deleting this incriminating tweet by John Swan, in which D'Angelo actually criticized people for blindly believing screenshots and word of mouth, which is precisely the only thing he used to determine that Tom was a racist in this conversation. Wait, did I forget to mention that one? My bad. He then lied to John Swan saying that he deletes all of his tweets and this one wasn't cherry picked, but John easily debunked that by showing that he deleted all of his tweets in September and this one's from October. Aside from that, he proved he's unable to understand a simple analogy. None of this guy's tweets are clear to me whatsoever. And he will take just about anything from his fans, including this video, a video where he took Tom wildly out of context and used it in the final product of his exposed video. You're being quite hypocritical too though, because you yourself made the argument that the YouTuber Hyojin was racist for talking the exact same way as you. Additionally, I'm not too sure that you have much room to talk about racist comments when you say shit like No you stupid f I just find it funny that she would complain about getting racist comments when she says shit like this It's either racist or it's not Once again, I'm not gonna let you selectively apply logic This alone would be enough to discredit someone on the bounds that he's a drama YouTuber who couldn't even watch the video on the guy he's exposing or fact check a tweet If he would've done the proper research, he would've noticed the context of the message was Hyojin complaining about the horrible racist comments that she had received and Tom pointing out she says stuff like this in private so clearly she shouldn't be offended. Basically, don't pretend you're pure and perfect if you're gonna be edgy in private and this analogy only would work on Tom if Tom himself had been offended over the racism in his comment section. But he wasn't. That was you. Someone whose history on the internet is really interestingly scrubbed. Hmm. The difference between us, D'Angelo, and the reason why I'm better than you is that you can make a nice video ignoring context and taking statements out of context. I, on the other hand, can make a better video just by effortlessly throwing the context you left out right back in your face. I mean, not to mention this dude was researching Turkey Tom and talking to his friends and shit on fucking Thanksgiving. This dude couldn't even take a day off to do some Thanksgiving shit and, you know, work on getting that paycheck on Black Friday. Nah, he dropped all this shit which caused some crazy fan to then use it as an excuse to dox Tom over and ring his parents on fucking Thanksgiving. As for the phone calls to his house, I'm not taking responsibility for that. By my standards, that's not your fault, but if you're gonna say that Tom's responsible for the anti-Semitics in his YouTube comment section, then by your own logic, you attempting to cancel Tom contributed to the psycho fans getting his information. And if people have Tom's number, they likely have a name because white pages exists. So your attempt to downplay the situation by like, do you really think this guy's first name is Turkey? and his last name is Tom, is a really fucking weak point. And that's where I'd like to end today.